If you are following my new to vinyl playback journey, you would have seen in my last video that I was testing specific things, trying to find the best path and products to use to get past, you know, record noise, pops and crackles, but really just to get the best sound quality I can from very expensive record purchases. And in that video, I looked at record cleaning, I looked at the problem of static and different anti-static products like brushes and sleeves and more. And that video was really long because there was a lot to test and it could have been much longer because I'd looked at and tested a lot of other things as well. So that's what this video is going to be. Really, it's like a part two, but it's going to be more product review focused, but still hopefully just as useful to you. I want to start by looking at the phono stage that I've been using for the last month or more, which is the Modrite PH9. And it's on loan to me from Elite Audio, so thank you to the guys there. And I'm not sure how much longer I'll get to have it for, so it's only right to include it in a video and talk about my experiences with it. And it's quite an interesting phono stage, but I think it can also be quite confusing because you can specify it with different things to be how you want it to be. And I think I have the most basic model here, the PH9, which is just a single-ended in and single-ended out configuration. But you can also have a T version, which is a 500 pounds upgrade, and that adds a tube rectification stage to the power supply. So it's a 3,500 pound unit that would make it 4,000 pounds. But you can also have an X version, which adds Lundell transformers to the balanced output or adds a balanced output with Lundell transformers, probably a better way to describe it. And that's a 1,250 pound upgrade. So that would take it to over five grand, which is a lot of money, but I really wish I had that version here because I would have really liked to have tried that because you know, balanced output I always like, and I just think you know, that, should, that could have added just that little bit of extra special character. So maybe I'll get to try that in the future. But what I like about the phono stage is all the controls are on the front and I much prefer that to dip switches on the back. And I like the buttons and the switches all feeling heavy and clunky and old fashioned in a way. And there is something reassuring about that for some reason. I also really like how big the knob is for selecting between MM and MC and how you can easily mute the sound, which is great for dusting down your cartridge. And the knob feel is just good here. And I also like the color and the look of the main unit, but the power supply, the separate power supply being a different look and a different color, I'm really not so sure about that. I feel like if you've put down you know, more than 5,000 pounds for a phono stage, those two should at least color match, but I think they should visually match as well. On the inside, it's an interesting design. As you can see, tubes are being used here, but it's not an overly tubey sounding unit. And that's important to stress. And I wish I could dissect the design more. So if anyone can add anything interesting, please let us know down below in the comments section. The gains on offer here are impressive. 46 to 52 dB for mm. I like having that variation. And 52 to 64 for MC. So I like that overall flexibility here because it should mean it works well with lots of different cartridges. And I would say the PH9 is quite a quiet phono stage, but there is some, always some kind of underlying minor hum that you can hear with it. And that's only really noticeable when you have the volume turned up really loud and it's just silence. But there is always a little bit of hum, regardless whether you're using MM or MC, or even if you've got nothing connected. So it's not totally silent. And I don't think it's as quiet as the YBA PH1 phono stage I had here before. But that was running off of batteries. It's not a tube you know, a phono stage like the Modrite is, and it's like a small, small difference. So, you know, I think I think the Modrite would be classed as a quiet phono stage, although it's not, you know, totally silent. And sonically, the jury is still out for me because I haven't really tested it enough on its moving coil input, but the moving magnet input sounds really very good. Because I didn't really, or I haven't really noticed too much presentation difference between the moving magnet input and the moving coil input. And that's really very different to all the other phono stages I've used up until this point where I've noticed a very obvious, I'm gonna call it a more subdued sound. When you're using a phono stage and you compare MM to MC, of course the cartridge is different, but like 
the sound has always seemed a bit more subdued for me on Movie Magnet, but that's not the case here at all with the mod, right? So I would say if you're a moving coil step up transformer user in particular, or if you're just looking for a very good moving magnet phono stage, well then the ModRite PH9 seems like a good one to me, and one that I would recommend that you at least listen to. And then I think compared to the YBA that I was using before, you do get some more tone and richness to the sound here. It's a bit more substantial sounding too, which I like. And I also like the timing or the ebb and flow of the music from the mod right. It's just got a nice vibe going on and the vocals are smooth and there's always a good amount of detail. And for negatives, I can't really say too much here, but like getting between the weeds and nitpicking a little bit, I have found it to be very sensitive to the cartridge or maybe the cartridge setup, which is probably a good sign and probably a good thing, but it means the cartridge setup becomes more important, which is, you know, can be a challenge for a newbie like me. And I would also say that I'm not sure if the PH9 can give really what I'm gonna call like a full big scale dynamic sound. That's a, a tough one to say. I, d I just haven't experienced that yet where the sound really kind of gets out of the speakers like I would say I would expect maybe from like a reference quality phono stage. But this could be the cartridge, this could be a whole host of other things. I just haven't quite experienced that yet. And I also think maybe that's where adding those, or the X version of this phono stage, adding those Lundahl transformers for a balanced output, maybe that could kind of lift the phono stage performance there, which is why I would have loved to have tried it. And, you know, because obviously I don't know, but that's maybe my assumption of the difference there. But look, I'm really nitpicking here. I'm kind of looking for negatives rather than there being anything that's obvious. I really like the phono stage. I think it sounds really good. And it's definitely the best phono stage I've had here so far, but my experience is really limited so far. The next thing I want to talk about, I'm going to call a big difference maker. And I ran a poll in my YouTube community a couple of weeks back asking the question, how many of you are using upgraded or better or different record platter mats? And it was surprising to see at least half of you were not using anything or were using just what came with your turntable. And only a very small percentage of you saw value in spending what I'm gonna call real money on this type of product. And that was really surprising to me. It kind of wasn't, but it really was. Because last year, bearing in mind I'm new to all this, I'm very open-minded, last year I visited a friend and we did some listening comparisons or testing on his Rager RP6 turntable. And we was listening between the felt, I think it's a felt mat that came included with the turntable, comparing it to this, which is the Origin Live record platter mat we was using Origin Live's Gravity One record weight on top as well. We listened to that solution and we listened to the Hexmat Eclipse record isolator with their molecular record clamp, which obviously I also have here. So we was, we did some listening comparisons and it was really, really surprising for me and really easy to hear differences between those solutions. I'd say the Origin Live solutions, the two of them seem to add more of, more warmth to the sound, a bit more of what I would class as like a, a traditional or stereotype vinyl character, a bit more sultriness, a bit more warmth, and a bit more nice pleasingness to the sound, but also it helped to just bring a bit more focus and organization to the sound as well. So not a massive difference, but an obvious one and a significant one. Whereas the hex map solutions, the two of them, made a really big difference. They helped to lower what I'm gonna call like the vinyl noise floor or the system noise floor to bring more clarity, more focus, more organization, more specificity to the sound stage. A really big and tangible difference. So that was enough for me to go, right, I want to test these out for myself. I want to get them here, test them out in my, my own setup to, you know, to see whether that those differences are you know, transferable from, from turntable and cartridge, you know, to another one. And it's been a really interesting, you know, experience to test these products here. Because on my turntable, the Bergman Modi, being an air bearing design, meaning there is no or minimal contact between the platter turning and the bearing. So any vibration that we expect to get from that should really be minimal but there was still the same sonic differences happening here with these platter mats. 
The Origin Live matte really made a difference actually. And it again was just helping to add a bit more vinyl character, a little bit more warmth and a little bit more sure footedness to the sound. However, the Gravity One record weight didn't really seem to have the right effect on this turntable compared to the included weight that comes with it, which is really quite substantial and really quite heavy. You can see it, if I move my hand, you can see it on top of the turntable. Now it's like a, a big thing. I think it needs to apply a bit of pressure downwards and the Gravity One's quite a light record weight. So the weight of the Gravity One wasn't the one for this turntable, but the mat for 45 pounds, I think was adding like a nice improvement, subtle, but nice, a bit more warmth, a bit more color, a bit more tonal saturation, and a bit more organization. So for like 45 pounds, I'd be happy with the difference. But the hex mat pairing made a really big difference here. Again, lowering the noise floor, but it also made music from records sound more organized, but better for me was they were now sounding more dramatic, more dynamic, with a bit more energy and a bit more dynamism about them. And I noticed this most with like percussive instruments, drums, wow, they're not, now we're like really kind of kicking and really kind of coming off the background with more pizzazz and more energy. And I think that'd be more realism, to be honest. And it was really quite a nice difference because like, you know, vinyl, to vinyl, wow, this is like, you know, getting getting engaging, really like kind of lifting up the sound. So the Hexmat products were fantastic for that, bringing more focus, bringing more organization to the sound, but a bit more expressiveness, dynamism, a bit more life coming through. But, you know, this is quite a pricey setup, and I have here, these are like a limited edition kind of all white version, which only comes as a set, and you get the molecular clamp, which is really interesting product, the Eclipse isolator, and you get a really nice tool for setting up VTA, which I've been using a lot, actually, it's really helpful. And this set costs 400 pounds, so it's quite a pricey set, but the difference it makes is very big and very dramatic. And you can buy the, the products individually, but like the limited edition white products only come as a set, and I really like the white and how it contrasts on the all black turntable. So it's a pricey set for sure, but the difference it makes, I found to be very substantial across two different turntables now, and I would recommend, of course, that you try it, especially if your vinyl setup is a bit like subdued or sat down, and you'd like it to be a bit more lively, a bit more dynamic and cutting and expressive, but in good way, in a good way, not in a bad way, in a really good way, then it's definitely a product I can recommend. But there is not a huge amount of information about how the Hexmat products work. On the website, it mentions industrial levels of damping coefficients in the materials that are used. And both the molecular and the eclipse feel hard and soft to the touch. And there are a lot of tiny three millimeter spheres on the eclipse that are hard for me to get on camera. The molecular clamp feels like it's made from the same material as the Eclipse isolator, but the spheres are much larger, they're seven millimeters. And the molecular really does kind of clamp down really quite tight on the spindle of the turntable, which is why I think this works really well on the Bergman turntable, because if you imagine that clamp is kind of, as you push it down, it's applying pressure down on the record in a similar way, and probably a better, better way, than the heavy clamp or the heavy weight, sorry, that comes with the Bergman turntable. So like, this is really thin with these really interesting spheres, isn't it? But once you clamp that down, it kind of like, it's applying pressure, isn't it? Very similar to how a weight would, but probably better because like it's under tension, isn't it? So that's, that's what I'm thinking here anyway. But my main negative with that would be, this is really a very tight fit. And it's, it even says in the instructions, but you soon realize that you have to stop the turntable spinning in order to put this on and then obviously start it back up again. And it's the Bergman's actually quite slow at stopping. It spins so smoothly that it takes a long time to stop. And then it's quite a slow starter to get up to speed. So I've been leaving it playing or spinning the whole time and then just taking records off and putting them back on because you're not damaging anything. It's really easy to do it with this design. However, with the molecular clamp, of course, you can't do that. You have to stop the turntable spinning and start it up again. So using this is definitely slower than I would like it to be. So that's that is definitely a negative, but you know, it's one of those things record, you know, listening to records is slow anyway, right? It's like a more slow paced things and the sound quality difference it is <laughs> it's easily worth the effort. And I think the reason that these mats or isolators are even making a difference is because they are dealing with the first contact point for vibration and energy storage in the turntable. Because I think we have an equation here. On one side of the equation is the stylus and the cartridge. 
because they're one side of the record and we know how important they are for sound quality. And then on the other side of the record, we have a platter, which is a solid lump of something, aluminium in my case, and that is not a dead material, it will resonate some. So I think these solutions from Hexmat and Origin Live must just be dissipating some energy. And they must be doing it differently or working at different frequencies because they sound totally different and they have to be different in order or working differently to sound different, don't they? So it's been really interesting to experience all this, but that is not the end of the story because Origin Live recently just released this. This is their Strata or Strata record platter mat and it's big as you can see it's thick it's a really interesting design because it's very clearly obviously like a mixture of layers and a mixture of materials it's got like a hard back and then a softer top and it's really quite thick i think it's three millimeters thick and that meant i had to adjust the vta on the turntable or the tone arm in order to make it work but wow what a difference, what a difference this makes. Really like the Strata or the Strata because it adds a lot, a lot of what I'm gonna call like, what you'd expect from vinyl, like a tonal warmth and like fullness to the sound. It's really nice richness and fullness and warmth to the sound while improving, tightening up and improving bass. And I don't think you necessarily get more bass, it's just a, you get like a perception of more but better quality bass. And it's making music sound smoother and nicer and just adding that, to me that whole effect adds a lot of pleasing character to the music. So I really, really like the Strata, but it is a chunk of money, it's 295 pounds. But for the difference, for me, that's like an, like an obvious big difference and an easily justifiable difference for 295 pounds. And it's designed to work on all turntables, interestingly, except Origin Live turntables that already have like a multi-platter you know, design built into them. And it's very obviously multi-layers because like I say, you can see the base layer there, you can see a different layer in the middle. And Origin Live say there's layers and there's like sub-layers going on in here. Again, trying to absorb different frequencies to try and give you a greater net effect. So I really have enjoyed the Strata, I really like it. But this is where it gets interesting because as much as I've liked it and I really like its effect, I kind of was missing, excuse me, I kind of was missing some of the effects of the Hexmac products because the Hexmac products make vinyl sound a bit more dynamic and a bit more organized and precise and a bit more lively and, you know, a bit more, yeah, a bit, a bit more of this, you know, liveliness, whereas the Origin Live Strata takes it the other way, it makes it richer and deeper and and more pleasing so i actually wanted both you know a greedy audio file i wanted the best of both so i started listening to some different combinations and i actually found using the strata mat with the hex mat molecular clamp was like the magic it was like the best of that with some of that give me almost the best of everything all the warmth and the richness and the fullness to the sound and the bass better bass with more liveliness and energy and a bit more dynamics and cutting sound coming through so like the combination of the two on the Bergman with the turn with the tone arm and everything that I'm using the cartridge was the magic one so if anybody tries this combination out I'm sure you're gonna be super happy with it so in that case and in you know, in light of that, all I'm going to say to you now is, you're welcome. So there's one more product that I've been testing. Well, I haven't actually done much testing with it, but there's one more product that I bought in to try because I wanted to try and get the vinyl noise floor down as low as possible, which is what all of this has been about. Static, cleaning, you know, mats and isolation of the record. It's to try and get the noise, the, 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 the hiss, the fuss, the pops, the crackles, all of that down as much as possible to try and just get the sound off of the vinyl records, that lovely vinyl sound. That's what my goal has been. It's all, it's what our, all of our goals are, isn't it, of course. So the other product that I don't have here, and the reason I don't have it in my hands here is because it's still plugged in to the system there behind me, is the Puritan Labs Groundmaster City. 
which is a very simple plug and play or plug-in device that comes with a ground cable and it's said to give you 90% of the benefit of a dedicated ground rod that you'd have to install in your garden somewhere and then run a cable back through to your system, which is a hassle. It's said to give you 90% of that performance without any of that hassle. So when I first plugged it in, I connected it to the preamplifier, which you can't see behind me, but was very high in preamplifier, the Griffin Essence. And I sat down and listened, and I didn't notice a huge difference, I'll be perfectly honest. But I was listening, thinking, or subconsciously I was thinking, there's something different here. I can't put my finger on it. And I'll just, I'll kind of give it some more time and I'll listen and I'll come back later and I'll do some, you know, plug in, plug in, in, A, B, listening, testing. And then a week later, I hadn't done any testing. I'd just been listening to and enjoying the system. More so, I was enjoying the sound of the digital side of the system because that seemed to be better as well. Now, I wouldn't put my house on being able to pick out the differences I was hearing in any kind of blind test. It wasn't that kind of difference. Because I think some hi-fi tweaks or upgrades that we can make, they can lift the performance up, make it make it lift up, make it bigger, brighter, or any, any of those things that are obvious to listen to. Other tweaks that we can make or things that we can change do the opposite. They just seem to relax the system or just take the edge off of the system. And they're much more difficult to pick out in quick A-B listening tests. However, what you notice is when you're listening for longer periods of time, longer listening sessions, when you have those products, in the system, then you take them away. And it's the take, taking them away usually is the one that you notice. When you take them away, all of a sudden music just doesn't quite feel the same, or you don't quite feel engaged with it in quite the same way. And we, I'm sure we can all relate to that. So that is the, the, the positive experience that I think, I think I experienced from the Puritan Labs Ground City. And it's not cheap, at about 195 pounds, but it's not crazy expensive either and i bought it with my own money bought it from you know a shop here i actually used my patreon money trying to put patreon money to good use so if anybody you know is supporting the channel a huge thank you to you and there'll be a link down below if you'd like to you know help me and try and you know help me make better videos and maybe just buy me a coffee from one month support i would really appreciate it so i bought it myself you know there's no connection here back to puritan labs and i and I need to test it more, but like sometimes you just put a product in the system, we've all done it, and it just, yeah, I like that, I'm just going to leave it. So that's been my takeaway from it. So I've, I can kind of recommend it, I'd like to be able to recommend it, I don't feel like I've tested it enough to unequivocally recommend it to you, but like for £195 it could be worth trying on the proviso that you can return it if you don't feel it's making a big enough difference for you. That would be, I suppose, where I am. And that, I suppose, ties up this video too. This is where I'm at so far with my vinyl journey. You know, I'm trying to get into the weeds or look between the weeds and try and make sure that I'm doing everything right before I then start to review products, which is really, I think, important because I have a whole new turntable here and a tone arm to review from Origin Live. I have their Calypso, I think, turntable and their Conqueror tone arm. So that's like good level stuff. That should be really good. So I'm looking forward to reviewing that. Plus, I'm trying to get my hands on a few different types of cartridges to try and broaden my experience there as well. So there's always there's lots going on on the channel. So hopefully you're you're enjoying, you know, you've enjoyed the my vinyl journey up until this point. Hopefully you can see where I am, you know, and hopefully I'm helping other new people to this in some regards as well. If you'd like to see more of my vinyl journey, please subscribe to the channel, of course. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up because it always helps.